Hey guys, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and today we're going to talk about Wisconsin. So as I'm sure you know, things have been very tumultuous in the Kenosha, Wisconsin, where I have a couple friends from, actually. I'm here in Minnesota, so we're, we're just across the border. Kenosha's on the other side of the state, but I know a bunch of people from Kenosha. I've been to Kenosha multiple times, as I'm sure many of you have, and uh it's 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 getting real, right? So there's the incident that happened here with this young 17-year-old man named Kyle Rittenhouse, and he ended up shooting uh, a couple people. I think maybe a total of three or four people. Two of them didn't make it, and there's he's been arrested. He's been charged with first-degree murder, and this is this whole saga. And so I've seen multiple videos of the incident, which I'm going to try to loop in here, and uh, I. I've come to the conclusion that this this was a pretty good shoot by all the evidence that I have at my disposal of all the video cameras. The really interesting thing is when incidents like this happen, we have videos now from multiple different angles because everybody's got their phone out and everybody's everybody's taking video. So we end up with, with a really good picture of what happened in a lot of these incidents. Uh, so basically, here's the story as I understand it, and, and please go ahead and try to provide some correction on the details if, if I get them wrong. But the 17-year-old kid from Illinois uh, grabs his AR, goes up to Kenosha, about 20 miles north of him, is out there to protect some businesses. Uh, the first guy who ends up uh, getting shot and killed is a guy who chases him down uh, and throws a Molotov cocktail at him and then ends up getting popped in the head. Uh, that's, the, that's the first guy that, that died, right? So you're a 17-year-old kid. You're out there to, to protect this neighborhood. Someone's chasing you, a guy twice your age is chasing you, throwing a Molotov cocktail at you. I mean, I, that, that's a good shoot. You can see the video. I'm going to roll it in right here if I, if I got it. In America, in general, there are three qualifications you need to meet in order for lethal force to be legal. Ability, Opportunity, Jeopardy. If you've never read Deadly Force by Masad Ayub, I highly recommend you read that. It does a very good job of explaining lethal force defense law. Ability. Does someone have the ability to kill you? Opportunity. Do they have the opportunity to kill you? So, ability. If I'm standing here with a knife, do I have the ability to kill you? Yes. Opportunity. If there's a locked door between you and me, do I have the opportunity to kill you? No. Jeopardy. Jeopardy is weird. Jeopardy means manifesting intent. That's what Jeopardy means. If I'm lunging at you with a knife, do I am I manifesting intent to kill you? Right? The, the answer, of course, is yes. So if someone's chasing you, throwing a Molotov cocktail at you, are they exhibiting ability, opportunity, and jeopardy? And I would say yes. That is ability, opportunity, and jeopardy. Uh, so, so that was the first incident. And that guy who was shot, I wrote this down here because I want to get this correct. That guy's name was Joseph Rosenbaum. He was 36, and he's a registered sex offender. So that was the first guy. The second guy who ended up not making it. So then this, this kid, Kyle, is, is leaving this incident. There's a mob chasing him down the street. He trips and falls. Someone comes up and attempts to or actually does get to hit him with a skateboard, right, when he's on the ground. And he defends himself again. And that person who didn't make it, who tried to hit him with a skateboard, was Anthony Huber, 26, who has a history of being charged with battery and repeat domestic abuse. Apparently not convicted, couldn't confirm that. So charging isn't a conviction. I want to be fair about that. But was charged with a crime involving, <laughs> involving battery. Battery is actually hitting someone. That's, that's battery. Uh, previously, so apparently no stranger to hitting people. So that guy, skateboard guy, doesn't make it. Okay. Uh, then someone else who apparently is a convicted felon couldn't verify that, so I want to be clear about that, but uh, Gage Groskiewicz, I'm sure I butchered that, 26, a member of the People's Revolution Movement uh, who apparently was a felon and had a pistol and was coming up on the guy. Why well, he's still on the ground, just shot the skateboard guy, some guy else is coming up on him with a pistol, shoots that guy and blows off half his bicep. There's some fairly gruesome pictures online if you're really interested. <laughs> 
that's it. There's a theme here, okay? Uh, there's a theme of people with past criminal inclinations and in some cases convictions uh, assaulting a guy who was trying to do something good and he defended himself, okay? Again, multiple videos of this online. I'm gonna try to roll some in here. But that's, that's what happened. And now this kid has been arrested and, uh, and is going to get charged with first-degree murder. I'm going to link the statute for Wisconsin first-degree murder below. I was under the impression most first-degree murders required uh, a premeditated element, like it's a premeditated plan to kill someone. Wisconsin first-degree homicide apparently does not, so there's that. I still think he's going to beat it. Uh, I, I still don't think that that's going <laughs> to that's gonna go anywhere. If I was the defense, I'd just play that thing over and over again. So Kyle Rittenhouse, I doubt you'll ever see this video, but I want you to hear me say, you did a good job. You did a good job. You need to be told that most every single one of us is gonna feel some kind of guilt over doing some action like that because it's natural to feel guilt after you end someone's life. But you did a good job and you did the right thing. I have a hard time seeing how you didn't. In fact, uh, you, if you want to come take a class with me for free for like the rest of your life, you can do that. So that's just a standing offer. You know, one of the things that has been extremely frustrating about this Kyle deal is the backlash that I've seen from some of the people in the gun world, right? There are people saying, oh, he shouldn't have been there. He shouldn't have done anything. It was stupid for him to go out there. This kid deserves to be treated as a hero, <laughs> okay? That's, that's pretty clear. Um, he was out there defending someone's business from getting it burned down because, again, the police weren't able or willing to help. I don't understand what's happened to our society or our culture where we are in a place now where we question the uh, actions of someone who goes out to do something as selfless as trying to protect someone else's business. I, I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand these people in the gun world that are saying he shouldn't have been out there. He should have minded his own business. He should have just stayed at home. Okay. If we all just stay at home, if the Founding Fathers stayed at home and minded their own business, we wouldn't have a country. What has happened in America? What is happening in the gun world where we are questioning this kind of initiative? This is the kind of initiative that wins wars. This is the kind of initiative that created America. This is the kind of initiative that we need more of and not less of. And shame on all of you people who are going to throw shade at a kid for trying to do something right and trying to prevent a business from being burned to the ground. You go out and prevent a business from trying to be burned to the ground and people are gonna throw flack at you for that? That is insane. I, I have no category or understanding for people who are in this camp who wanna just throw shade at a kid for doing something right. Okay, so as I was thinking about this whole deal, I was thinking about why does this keep happening, right? What, what's, what's the deal here? Right? And, and people are getting guns and going to protect businesses because the police are either unable or unwilling to do so. They, they, they don't have all the resources in the world. When there's mass riots like that, they, they lose control. That's how things work. So people, therefore, are taking it upon themselves to gear up and armor up and, and go protect businesses. Right? That, that, that's what happens. And what, why, like, why is that happening? What's leading to the anarchy? And, and at some point, we have this, we've reached this point in our country where we have put people, thanks to cultural Marxism, into camps based on their external attributes, right? Based on your skin color, your sexuality, or whatever, right? Whatever other these things are. And if you, whatever that is for you, that's what tribe you're in, right? So you're, you're white, you're male, you're straight, that's your tribe. And then you're black, you're gay, you're female, that, that's your tribe, or whatever. And so when one person from one tribe uh, gets shot by the police, uh, there, there becomes this belief that there's this oppressor-oppressed narrative, and it leads along these lines, these things that, well, that's just another example of the oppression, right? And so people riot because they feel disenfranchised, and they don't feel heard, and they don't feel like there's going to be justice. And then it leads to stuff like this. So stuff like this is going to keep happening, and it's going to get worse unless we're able to coalesce around what America is. And, and I, don't, I don't know if we're going to be able to do that or not. Um, I, I, look, if, if you're from America and the, the American dream and the American ideals of freedom and liberty and the pursuit of happiness and the right to free speech and the right to own guns and the right to not have the government just search your stuff, if you want police and the government to live by the same laws that we live by, 
uh, you're on my team. I don't care who you are. All right, we, we can be on the same team about stuff like that. But if you're going to continue to put people into groups and, and based on their race or their skin color or their sexuality or whatever, that's not, that's not America. That, that's going to continue to divide us and unite us. America is a country built around ideals. It's a country built around where we all believe in these same set of ideals. In fact, it's the only country that I know of that was founded on principles and not on ethnicity or nationality, uh, which, which is an amazing thing if you think about it. It makes it accessible to anybody, anybody. And when we do that, if we, if we can coalesce around that, then we will be able to have an America that's, heal, that's healable, that can heal. Until we do that, I don't know how we're gonna get there. Hope that was helpful. Would love to know your thoughts below. Uh, and, and if you're just going to say he was a white supremacist who shot a bunch of people, he's a terrible person, I don't, I don't care. You can say that, but you're wrong. You're an idiot. So there's that. That's all I got. Do brave deeds and endure.